Hello everyone and welcome to my simplified Dutch Angel Dragon Tail tutorial. This is a really fun and unique tail to create so I'm glad I get to share it with you. So what we're going to do first is take a bunch of pieces of paper and basically duct tape them together. This is going to be your pattern. This is normally how I make all my patterns from hand paws to tails so you basically can make any shape you want with this. As you can see this tail is going to be really long. It actually comes out to be about 5 feet which is super exciting because I rarely get to make tails this long. So what I'm doing here is actually marking which way I want the fur to go and this is extremely important when making a tail. I also wrote where each color goes so it makes it easier whenever I cut these all out. As you can see this tail is pretty simple, it only has two colors but if you have more colors than this you would just draw them on the paper. It's also best that you have an X-Acto knife, it makes cutting the fur really easy. Just be careful because they are very sharp. What I'm doing here is actually dividing this into three separate parts because of how long this tail is. There's going to be three different sections of this tail so that I can make it super long. Here I have my fake beaver cut fur. It's very soft and very slippery and you'll see how that comes into play later. So what I'm doing here is laying out my pattern pieces. You're going to need two of each, front and back. I'm trying to put them close enough together to where I can save fur, but not too close together so I can have a seam allowance. Your seam allowance should be about one to two centimeters if you're sewing with a sewing machine. If not, you don't have to worry about that. Here, as you can see, I'm going really fast with the X-Acto knife because it's super easy to cut this out. Now I'm putting all my pieces together to make sure they all fit. It's also very important that you mark which patterns are what because this is the front, as you can see, and they all three go together, and there's also three pieces that go to the back. When doing front and back, all you have to do is take your pattern and mirror it, as you can see right there. That'll give you your other half of your tail. And you'll see here that I actually mix up my patterns. As you can see, it's marked with an F. The back of the pattern is marked with a B, and I noticed that these don't fit together, and I realized that I accidentally switched my front and my back. So the front black pieces are going to go with the back white pieces due to me mixing them up. Normally, your front pieces will go with the other front pieces. And now I'm basically just going to sew it all together, and when you sew, some of your fur can get stuck in the seams, so you just want to brush those out. And as you can see, I have a very clean line where I sewed with my sewing machine. And this is sped up tremendously. This will take a very long time. You want to go slow. I had to go especially slow here because this fur was extremely slippery and it kept wanting to slide out of my sewing machine and all of the thread would just not catch on it. It wasn't working. So I had to give this fur an extra large seam allowance. This sewing process took about maybe two hours because of how long the tail is and I had to go very slow. When sewing, keep in mind all of the seams line up when you sew both of the halves together. I will show you later on what that means. This is just for the best result for your tail to come out in the end. So I didn't record sewing the other half because it's basically what I already did. And now we're going to sew both of the halves together. When sewing these halves together, keep in mind that your seams should line up like this right here. That means that your tail is lined up correctly. All three pieces of your parts of your tail should line up like this all the way down. If not, then you might need to restart because that means that one half is going down further than the other and they're not lined up correctly. As you can see right here, one of the halves is a little further down than the other, so I try to pull one of the sides down further to line them up. Sewing this other half of the tail with the black fur was especially hard because it was very slippery. As you can tell, I actually had to re-thread it right there because it kept sliding out. Now that I've reached the end of the tail, I can close it off and stitch back over it so that the seam doesn't come undone. Make sure to do this any time that you're stopping with your sewing machine. Basically like a save point. Now that I've got the tail turned inside out, I'm going to brush out all the seams so you can't see any of the lines that the sewing machine made. This makes it look like one giant fur piece instead of a bunch of smaller pieces. I'm going to grab my polyfill to stuff this tail. You can find polyfill at Joann's, Walmart, basically any store that sells crafts. Make sure you stuff it in small increments so that you don't get any weird lumps in the tail. So you just grab a little bit at a time, put it in, and then grab a little bit more, put it in. This tail took me about two bags of polyfill, which is quite a lot, so you're probably going to need to stock up if you're making a tail this long. I basically brushed out all the seams on the black half, and then we're pretty much done. I'm probably going to have to do a different tutorial on how to do the belt loop, because it is a long process. I might also do the gore detail tutorial if you're interested in that. This tail is super soft, not that heavy, really fun to wear, and it has a really cool yin-yang emblem at the end of it. If you liked the video, subscribe, and thanks for watching!